7 p.m. Call to order. Board of Health of Wakefield. Hold on, I gotta go get my phone. It looks like just the board and Cindy and Ruth are on the call. No visitors. Yep. Okay. But we are being recorded. So I see no public participation. Sure. Mm -hmm. And then, um, have you guys looked at the minutes? Yep. yep. I I, I didn't see anything. You didn't see anything that was an issue, right? I thought they were extremely oh, well written, Cindy. Agree. Hi, thank you. Um, going forward, I would just, um, since we're back to Wakefield only, um, thinking that you might as well just stick them in the letterhead because yes. it's really just the way I do my, my secretarial work is I print this stuff out and then stick them in a binder and it's Nice to have a header with a date when I use yeah. my glasses. Um, but does anyone want to make a motion on the minutes? I'll make a motion to accept the minutes of the June, I believe, 18th meeting. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Goreville, aye. Silver, aye. Linehan, aye. Excellent. The next item on the agenda is reorganization of the Board of Health. So let's take a moment and congratulate Candace on a resounding election. Good job. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for it. I know I heard the campaign. Brett. Yep. Laura, we can't hear you. Oh. You can't? Oh, now I can. What did I do? It's weird. So, um, so we need to reorganize. Uh, so I have been the chair and Elaine, I believe you have been vice and Candace, I believe you've been secretary. Is that correct, Cindy? Yes. Okay. Um, so I am happy to pass the duties of the chair. It's a little awkward with a three member board to figure out, figure this out because I have to take a motion to, um, to take a nomination. So if Elaine, you wanna start with a nomination for chair, not me. <laughs> oh, we can't we nominate you? I didn't have a start <laughs> Those well, you can. You <laughs> yeah, can. I, I personally would like to nominate Candace Linehan as the chair. I would second that. <laughs> uh, <laughs> <laughs> I would like to know what being the chair means. <laughs> okay. Oh, well, I guess we should have discussed this. But yeah, I'll outline it quickly. Um, so you tend to be, and, and if you don't want to do this, I can certainly continue, but, but you tend um, to kind of be the, the point person for, for the board. So if there are other town um, committees, town council, school committee, oh, no. uh, you would want, you know, it would be on you to sort of communicate with them on our behalf. So sometimes either you'll make a call to them or they will make a call to you. I did um, highlight my, because of COVID and looking at the website, I did highlight my email um, so that people could directly reach out to me if they wanted. I'm not sure I would recommend doing that. Um, actually, I wanted to discuss it you know, later on in the meeting. Um, I've gotten several emails that say that they can't figure out how to email the board, you know, issues to the board um, directly, and we do have a basic Board of Health email, but I don't know if it's being utilized. So yeah, it's utilized yeah. for complaints. It is. It is being utilized. All right. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> <laughs> ah. so we want to talk about you know. So it's you know, and essentially it's it's um, you run the agenda with Ruth. So if you want to put you know, so I mean it's interesting if you look at other boards in town, um, town council board really takes the the chair really takes control of the meeting board of health has generally followed issues of the day 
with Ruth because we're so, you know, we're fairly specific and, and somewhat narrow in our scope. We're not creating new things like town council or school committee might be doing. Um, but you were just connect with Ruth the week prior and saying, hey, what, what else is on the agenda? And, and Ruth would reach out to you for any other advice. Um, does that sound right, Ruth? Am I forgetting? Yep. So that's essentially, I can we tell you. Meetings. Yeah, we run the meetings. Yeah. So, so as you, you know, I, I have loosely um, used Robert's rules to, to run our meetings and, and try to try to welcome people. And it's been a little bit interesting on Zoom. So we can certainly all do it together. But so there's also, um, if you go on MAHB's website. Oh, yeah. Which I believe is mahb.org. Um, they have a, well, they have a, a lot of resources. One resource is like a tutorial on how to run a public hearing. Yeah. Which I think is very useful to print out and have. Yep. They also used to have um, Board of Health certifications, but they just couldn't get people to, you know, come out for a whole day on a Saturday. Mm -hmm. So they now have this, have it online. Oh, do they? So, yeah. So, you know, they, there are resources on their website about what is a, what does a board of health do? What are their responsibilities? You know, what's the difference between a board duty and a staff? So I would highly recommend when you're in your spare time, but Lane, you have a lot of spare time now, um, <laughs> to to look at it and I, I think Candace you know obviously be selective but um, you know some of that I think you would find very useful okay would you do you want us to defer reorganization for another another meeting like September I mean I'm not sure that would uh, I mean I, I I will be able to help you, Candice. Right now, I'm I'm at home, anyways. Um, my husband. Um, oh, how's he doing? Surgery, so I'm home. I, I have no life basically, and I probably will not have life a life in the fall. So, you know, you might. I guess we're for flu clinics again. So don't say that. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, I'm ready for that. I'm already ready. <laughs> no. What I'm most interested in, I suppose, is, I mean, I know it's hard to predict, but the additional time commitment beyond our meetings, what mm -hmm. that looks like? It generally, um, until, you know, things like a pandemic hit. Uh, right. It's, it's not that much more. It's just, you know, I mean, if I think about the timing um, for Board of Health, you know, certainly traditionally it was two hours a month for a meeting and time to prep. Um, I've always also been involved with, with uh, wake up. So that, you know, that didn't. But you I, weren't doing that as chair. You were doing nope, that as a member. Exactly. That's board. nothing to do. I was about to say that's nothing to do with being chair. That's just something else. I would say because of the, of COVID-19, um, especially in March and April, I really um, bounced up on communications as, as did Ruth. I mean, the, we all did. Um, and I don't know what the year will bring. I feel like we have gotten in sync with understanding um, what game plans are and that we have some systems in place that had not been in Maybe. place before. I wonder, Laurel, since we've gone through a pandemic, and I mean, that's something, and a lot of um, a lot of emergency planning is going to come out, too. Mm -hmm. I don't know if Ruth was on that call yesterday with mm -hmm. the new explanations there. Um, but maybe we could do, as we do as part of our reorganization, is to think about it, that if the CHEA get, you know, more four or five different things come about, that we could just pass something on to someone else. Yeah, um, you know, and ask someone else to just to step in to be the communication person. That might help us. Yeah, you know, it, it's interesting. I think it's always good. And in fact, sometimes I just give Tom Mullen a call, but you know, always good to, to review open meeting laws. Um, we are only three 
And I think that especially during the emergency, we have just said we haven't, there's kind of a fine line of understanding what deliberation is. So it's not that we have voted to do something and deliberate on a policy, we have just done work. So for instance, Elaine and I are, you know, have, have done some of the work um, with, with contact tracing and, and follow up. That's not deliberation and it's okay for us to kind of negotiate or, or, or talk about that. I think it's just always important um, to understand when you're deliberating about something versus a how to or a schedule sort of thing. Um, it, yeah, you really can't talk to each other outside of the meetings yeah. unless it's about the weather. <laughs> Right. And so, I mean, since I'm so new to this role, if I had questions, how could I, I mean, would we have to spend meeting time uh, asking these questions or, you know, if I wasn't sure about protocols or how to do things, if it's not appropriate to discuss outside of a meeting. Just ask me. Yeah. Okay. And okay. you can ask the board members that kind of a question. Right. Right. You can ask, how do I do this? Yep. Okay. Yeah. So that was my point. You know, you, you can talk a little bit more about the weather. You can set, you can, you can report, but you cannot deliberate. So you can say, well, it's more than deliberation. You can't discuss, but if, if you're asking how to do something, you can ask that. Right. But I can ask you, Ruth, and that wouldn't be considered deliberating since you're not part of the board. Exactly. exactly. Correct. Yep. Yeah. Okay. And I, right. I probably have the answer. And then okay. you can also, um, you can call other chairs and, and you know, either. And just don't overthink this, okay? Yeah. If you have yeah. a question, you call me. Yep. We have pretty basic meetings. Um, if it's anything having to be controversial or a controversial public hearing, um, we will walk you through it. On the other hand, if you feel like you would prefer to have another year on the board under your belt, totally do that. Then you know Elaine can be chair for a year, and you can do it the following year. Um, it is a little unfair to ask somebody, yeah, <laughs> new to be doing this, and I get that. So you know maybe Elaine could do it for this coming year, and then you know you'll have another years of just seeing how the process goes. And then they'll nominate you for the next year. Um, I mean, Elaine, like, how are you feeling about like potentially doing this role? I mean, you have your life and everything going on too, you know? She has no life. Uh, <laughs> right now, I don't. It's it's, I'm, I'm, I'm a 24 hour nurse in my house right now. So uh, that's been my big thing. Um, I would be okay with it, but if I did run into some problems, I may, there may be a couple of things come up in the fall that may interfere with me, you know, being available here and there. And if it does, then I would just refer to Ruth anyways, or, you know, give Ruth a call and a little bit of a heads up. I would be fine. And right. maybe with something like that, that might be a good time that you would be able to, like I said, if we split some duties, you know, and then say to you, you know, geez, I, um, I'm not going to be around. I'm, you know, physically and mentally not going to be able to handle something. And would you take it as, you know, as like just like a, a, a per diem chair, I guess I would call it, or a stand in. And then that way we would be a vice chair in the process. Elaine, you could just be the vice chair. When the chair is not available, the vice chair takes over. Okay. So we're still discussing. Um, so a couple of options. We do nothing and we just keep it where it is. Or um, maybe we do Elaine as chair and Candace as vice. Yep. Mm -hmm. Um, so that would be option B. Option A is nothing. And C would be Candace as chair and Elaine as vice is I think how I'm hearing it. So do you think option, you know, what, 
What do you think about option B? So Elaine, you, or we can do, we can do option D, which is I stay chair, Candace is vice, and she learns the role. Right, but that kind of means that you have to take on this yeah, role longer. Do. Yeah. And, and I suppose that everybody kind of get their turn and then we get really, their break. We really do roll it around. Um, so why don't we go with the option with me as chair okay. and maybe Candace as vice, and then if something comes up that I can't be in, then she can take over as vice and it would be a way to learn. And she yeah. would still have Ruth and you to, yeah. to lean on for questions. Yeah. We're not. I'm up for that. Okay. Um, so. Thank you, Elaine. This you makes it odd. So, so this is just where reorganization is so odd with a, a three-person board. So I'm going to break ranks and make a motion that we reorganize um, here in July 2020 such that Elaine Silva takes on chair, Candace takes on vice chair, and Laurel Gorville takes on secretary. I second that motion. How about that? Who's in favor? Silva, yes. Yeah. Okay. Linehan, yes. Gorville, yes. You got that, Cindy? Yep. Okay. All right. You've been busy, Ruth. You want to do an oral report? Yep. Um, Let's see. Um, actually, Wakefield has not had new cases all week. Um, we're still at 251 as of today. Oh, I thought you had a higher number the other day. You were mm -hmm. down we the other one day. case at one point. I know we lost one because they weren't really Wakefield. Yeah. Um, I can look back, but I know Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday has all been 251. Oh yeah, you're right. I mean, 350, yeah. I'm sorry, 321. Yep. So on Friday, it was 317. And then on Monday, it was 322. And then it went down because we, we had a case that we didn't think was ours, but and it turned out it really wasn't ours. So 321. Okay. And we, I did give a report to the um, town council Monday night mm -hmm. and I told them 322 that day, which included three new cases that day. So we got three new cases on Monday, lost one on Tuesday, <laughs> none today, um, 31 deaths. Um, and at the time, three active cases plus the new one. So six current cases. Although I'm not sure if it went down to five because one of those new ones might have, so it's probably five active cases now. Okay. And Karen is doing it by herself, although today we um, did reach out for some Melrose nurses to help and some are not available. And I, vol I, told, the, I told Karen that even though they're Melrose cases, if this really blows up and we, don't, we need more nursing help, I said that at least Elaine would be available. And I know you're really busy right now, Laurel, so. Um, Anyway, so that is Wakefield. We have, we do have some money to spend down by the end of August. Carol is just, um, she's spending all her time following up on complaints because we're just yeah. getting inundated with complaints. And that's not going to go down since the governor announced to the whole world that if you have a complaint, contact your local board of health. Of course. Yeah. So without telling us he was yeah. going to do that. Yeah. So um, what I'm thinking of doing is seeing if I can 
find somebody to bring in part time to do some food inspections. I mean, the restaurants have been open four months without anybody looking at it. And I just don't think that's a great idea. Right. So, um, so I, that's what I'm looking at doing right now when I have two seconds. Um, Ruth, so, uh, one of my thoughts is kind of looking at the complaints that come my way that I forward to you is I'm wondering if there is any validity to doing kind of PSA signage. So, you know, well, we are. I'm sorry. I was going to get to that. Oh, I'm sorry. So, okay. um, let me do the complaint part. I did ask Coral if she would just give me a breakdown of the number and type of complaints for tonight's meeting just from the last two weeks, but I think she ran out of time and didn't get to it. Okay. So um, I, I, I will ask her to do that and, and then I'll forward it to you so that gives you just an idea of the, but it, it's basically people not wearing a mask or mm -hmm. restaurant tables are too close. I think it's, it's, I, I mean, we've got a few rat complaints thrown in and dumpster complaints thrown in. It's not all COVID-19, yeah. um, but I will get that for you. I'm sorry. I, I tried to have it for you tonight. Um, one of the, well, one of the complaints that we've been having since the beginning of COVID-19 was the lake. And I talked to our little mini sign committee within Wakefield Town Hall. And Jen has made up new signs for the big kiosks and the little kiosks around the lake. And they should be going up any day now. Um, the group felt that they did not want to put Oh, I'm sorry. And the signs are more positive messaging. Yes, good. Instead of negative, you know, wear a, wear a mask, wear a mask. It's more, thank you for helping keep yeah. everybody safe yeah. and thank you for wearing a mask kind of thing. Yep. Yep. Um, they didn't really want to put the electric signboard up again. Um, and they were all, they were consistent in that. So I guess we're not going to do that. The, um, you know, I said we can put, we can put a banner up if there was somewhere to put a banner, but there isn't an obvious place. Well, the banner placement in Wakefield is from the Civic Center and across the street. Right. But I'm saying there's no, I mean, that's not the only place in Wakefield, but there really isn't a good right. place to do that near the lake. Right. Right. So, um, we could wrap the gazebo. <laughs> yeah. So th that's what we're doing for new signage. And, and it is important to change out the signage every once in a while. Yep. yep. Um, I've been doing that at the kiosk in Melrose. So, um, I what about the building, um, oh, yeah. where the boats, uh, the boating building there? Is that a spot like on the side of that building? I know a lot of people gather in that area in that grassy area and then families that are taking their kids to the playground there. Do yeah, they have a wall? To, um, I think the playground is a good place to put a sign. Yeah. So let me suggest the playground. The boathouse. Or um, you could use like the fence. I know the, um, the playground there, the honeydew donuts at the head of the lake is fenced in. If it was something that could be sort of like tied along the chain link fence. Yeah. I will bring that up to them also. So that's what we're trying to do for some more and new messaging. I mean, they, they're hearing it from everybody. I, I just think the people who are not wearing a mask are just not gonna wear a mask. Well, I have, you know, I don't know if Coral has gotten any, and I'm wondering too about school property and whether school is taking care of that or we should offer that as well, or at least combine efforts. So you know, the whole social distancing, if you, you know, or masking, if you can't social distance, but positive messaging. Uh, well, we're fun. not out driving around looking for enforcement. No. You get a complaint, you know, we go and investigate it. Right. No, 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 absolutely. But I just, um, 
you know, people, well, there's just lots of different perceptions. So some of our complaints have been, you know, can't you do something about the playground? I said, well, they're outside. They're, you know, there, there are things that, that are reasonable and things that are not. Um, I am concerned that there's some messaging out there that when gyms open, uh, you know, people could sign a waiver not to wear a mask. And I'm like, no, 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 no. <laughs> There, there's there's no waiver here, and that really makes me concerned about a youth sports cluster. Um, well, which, you know, they which, haven't put out the guidance for the fall sports, mm -hmm. and oh. the youth sports for the summer guidance is out there. Right. Right. So. And what's tricky is, you know, okay, well, enough. So 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 you're doing that. Um, We're also doing some new messaging because next week or a week or two from now is national hurricane preparedness right. week right so um, if you look on the town's website we put up some hurricane preparedness stuff and specifically hurricane preparedness stuff with covid19 in mind yeah so maybe somebody will listen this time when we say you need to be prepared <laughs> i don't know but at least we're putting the word out yeah. Um, oh, so the other thing <laughs> in my health director's report in my head <laughs> is um, that Jen has given her notice and will be done the end of this month. Um, Coral, of course, is the main is the person in Wakefield, so doesn't directly affect Wakefield anymore because Jen hasn't well actually Jen was in charge of doing a certain number of um, of restaurants too. So she'll be gone the end of the month. Um, I'm I have interviews scheduled for the last week of the month. I will be away next week, but I'm scheduling interviews for the week. Is that right? Yes. Um, I'm scheduling interviews for the week after that. So that so the 27th. Yeah. The week the 27th. Yeah. So that way, um, you know, presumably people have to give notice and blah, blah, blah. But, um, you know, we can get somebody on board, you know, by September and hopefully earlier and minimally disrupt things. And if we can pay for, a part-time person out of the COVID money to try to do some food, then we won't be in terrible situation. Okay. Um, and wait a minute, I did have something else. <clears throat> oh yeah, I'm away next week and I will be somewhere with no cell phone reception and no <laughs> Wi-Fi. So I would say from noon on Monday till early afternoon Friday, I am not reachable. While okay. I'm gone, Coral and Karen are in charge. Okay. So if it's COVID, COVID medically related, it's Karen. If it's other stuff, it's Coral. Okay. But I'm here both weekends, so, you know. So that's that. And uh, there was one other thing. Oh, trying to, um, some reason, Doug Lyons' email is bouncing back to me. So once I figure that out, um, I'm trying to message Doug about, in his summer messaging, to remind parents that the uh, immunization requirements are not waived. So please make appointments this summer for your kids if they're necessary. And also the quarantine is not waived. So if you travel out of state within the last, you know, 14 days of the first day of school, your child will not be able to come to school. So please think of that when you're making your summer vacation plans. Please stay in New England. So it's okay for all of New England. Yep. So it would be nice if Maine would reciprocate, but that's another story. Well, you know what? <laughs> The main thing is um, is a little more nuanced. So you can drive to Maine and spend the day in Maine. Right. I did that. 
I spent the day at Agunquit. That's not an issue. But if you want to stay somewhere at a hotel or at a campground, you need to then you need the, um, the test. And but if it's a personal residence, I think you're exempt. Is that right? If you go to your home or like a family member's home in Maine, is that true? Not family members. I don't know about your own home. But Maine has just also um, stood up 18 testing sites. Yep. So that New York. you don't have to do it before you go. You can go to Maine, get tested, and then stay at your, wherever you are until the test results come back. So, um, because that's been a problem. We have been getting calls from people because Massachusetts Health Insurance still, with unless it's particular clinics, will not pay for your test if you're not symptomatic or a close contact. But my, but if you go to any of the, the um, ones that have just been stood up by the state, the closest ones to Wakefield are Lynn and Everett. Um, they're part of their, um, what the hell is it called? Hold on. Uh, I had it written down. Stop the spread. Part of their Stop the Spread campaign. Um, each day there's a different location in, in Lynn and Everett. Some of them you can just walk in, some of them you need appointments. I know there's also a walk in in Chelsea because we have a bunch of Melrose kids standing in line right now. Um, and in those, you don't have to have a symptom. But gets this straight with and gets the insurance companies to uh, to do this, it, it is a little bit of a barrier. So, um, everybody's been, you know, Kara and Catherine, Kara's working at home 100%. Catherine is mostly working at home and has been coming in to help cover the office. Um, I'm covering the office tomorrow morning. Catherine is covering Friday morning. Uh, I believe she comes in a little bit besides that, but primarily at home. And then I can't work in the office when Cindy's in the office because that's too many people in the office. So. I've been staying out of the office, except tomorrow's Thursday, except for tomorrow morning. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it is. Yeah. I have my calendar. Okay. Because Cindy's on vacation Thursday and Friday. Oh, good. Um, hey, Ruth, how often is town council summoning you to do updates? One I think it's been once a month. Okay. And this last one was you know, very brief update. Yeah, happened to I Kathy. was very brief. Yep. And basically said, you know, these are the numbers, these are the deaths, these are how many active cases we have. We've been um, pretty flat lately. Mm -hmm. uh, we're under control. Most of our time right now is spent on uh, answering complaints and enforcement of the newest guidelines. I wanted to reflect to you. Uh, anything else? Are you good? You think you're done? I just wanted to reflect back that um, all your hard work with making town meeting work was pretty impressive. Mm -hmm. um, Candace was sitting right next to the air cooler. I couldn't. It was too cold, actually. But it was it was good that the town inv it invested in that. And then they had outdoor seating, which um, I think alleviated a lot of some people's concerns and the acoustics out there were actually better because they had these mega TVs with really good sound bars. So it was an interesting thing to behold. The one thing that I got up to speak on was um, the town planner slash economic development because someone asked Administrative Mayo who was going to take over if they in fact did not hire a town planner and, and um, because Mr. Reeves, is he gone or is he gone. about to be? He's gone. Okay. 
And so it was interesting because he said that a combination of department heads, including Board of Health, would be pulled in to do some of those duties. And I said, wait a minute. <laughs> don't you think that we're a little busy? So between 10 and 12 every day? I don't know. Uh, I, no, I like when I heard that, I was like, that's it. I have to speak. So I did. I just did remind the town that um, the health department serves as a check and balance to some things. And we can certainly not be considering planning priorities because they may, in fact, not be consistent with. Well, we, we do work with planning and well, we true, do of course. plans. And we review plans, obviously, from, you know, when there's a new development or whatever, we're looking at the trash part. Um, there's some, there's one part in the housing code that's not in the building code. So we try to remind them. Right. You have to have screens on the, you know, on the sliding doors. Um, you know, we, we do, we do work with planning. Right, right. Um, and, and the building commissioner, we're working on a issue right now on a, a new owner slash, well, on, on the Shell station with their car wash and their um, blowers outside oh. and complaints from the neighbors. And I start, Coral is taking the lead on it. I started it. Um, they did do... As part of their plan, they did projected noise things, noise study, but now I was told at one point they did a noise study after the fact, but we can't, you know, there's a new planner or no planner, right. new building commissioner, we're trying to find a plan, if a study, if that exists. Um, so Coral is dealing with that and saying, if you did one, we need to see it. And if you didn't do one, Let's do it. we need to do one because they did have vacuums before, yeah, but not to the extent they do now. And- They're in a different location. Yeah, they're not only along the side of the building, but I was at Walgreens on my way home tonight and there are two in back of the building, pretty close to the fence. Mm. So uh, we're working on that. That's Interesting a non-COVID related thing that we're working on. They're also free right now. So I wonder if usage may be higher. I don't know if they're ever planning to start to charge. Oh, interesting. But you can use them for free. Um, and I wonder if people are more apt to get in there and use them because they don't have to pay. Uh, that's a really good point, Candace. I will let um, Coral know that because that is a good question to ask Shell, you know, is this a promotional or is it always going to be free? Clearly once it's you pay. It's the 31st of July. Oh, good. Elaine, did you just say something? Yeah, that car wash thing free is, um, it was a coupon thing card that came in the mail. It's only until July 31st for the free car wash. But to be oh. honest with you, I've known tons and tons of people that have gone mm -hmm. for it. <laughs> I haven't, but maybe I'll get there. Well, yeah, if it was free, I'd go for it too. <laughs> <laughs> so that makes sense because the, the complaint is that they're running from 7 a.m. to 8 a.m. Uh -huh. PM, and yeah. the, the vacuums are going and I mean, it's all day long. So that's what people are upset about. But once they start charging, that'll die down, I'm sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. Good. And then are they going to start charging for, like, people might come in for their free car wash, but I think people may be just scooting in to use the vacuum and then leaving. So I don't know if at some point they're going to start charging for use of the vacuums alone or sure they if do. they're always... I don't know anybody that doesn't charge for the vacuum. Right. Sure right now, it's just part of their July promotion. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, it'll solve itself then. Yeah, hopefully. All right. Anybody else have any other business? Um, I just wanted to mention one other thing. Uh, we are actually already working on flu. So yep. the, we're thinking about the flu clinics this fall. Um, it's a big topic of conversation statewide. We think that there will be a bigger increase of demand. There's a lot of questions about 
know, how are we going to differentiate between flu and COVID? All legitimate questions. Um, you know, there's going to be a big push this year on trying to get people immunized for the flu. We're looking at potentially doing a drive through, especially because we have Elaine's experience. Um, so I just want you to know it, it is July and I know nobody else is thinking about the fall, but we are. And, you know, we only have limited amount of vaccines. So we're talking to the state. Are they going to have additional vaccine available? Things like that. So uh, it's funny. I was just doing a CDC um, mm -hmm. required vaccine training on on other stuff that flu came up and you know i i have to wonder if if we would you know ramp it up like we did um you know novel novel h1n1 but but h1n1 well you, you haven't heard about that so i doubt it maybe there'll be the demand will be something in between right not as intense as that but more intense than the incredibly low numbers but the pharmacies are out early advertising yeah. flu shots. So, yeah. you know. Ruth, have, you, have you heard, Ruth, I heard from um, some other people in public health in regards to flu vaccine, that they were saying that a lot of health departments want to kind of cut down on the over 65 because of COVID. Have you heard anything about that or, you know, saying that you would have to be definite? I mean, we do have the over 65. We have the um, senior flu clinics here. You haven't heard anything about that, have you? No, and actually one of the women, one of the, you know, once a week I have a, an extra um, web, a Zoom meeting with the heads of the health districts, which we count as, and I don't remember her name, She's in Western Mass and she's a nurse and she's really active with MEAPHN. Um, and she's on, you know, she's been really active with the CTC stuff and all that. And she brought up, she, I think she was the one this morning that brought up flu, yeah. but she didn't mention that at all. Oh, okay. The issue with the over 65 part is the um it's a lot more expensive to buy yeah right mm -hmm. well they're just saying in general you know maybe the trend this year with covid where that's considered a high risk population with covid that maybe they should be tended to be referred to go to the local pharmacy instead of the health department yeah um why no i haven't heard that at all well yeah, I, I think I'm thinking the opposite that that um, especially, you know, I'm also wondering if we we need to expand to kids again, because, you know, everybody and Candace, you could speak to this in primary care, but you know, we're trying to keep those the parade low, though we're trying to catch up kids on immunizations who have missed them in general. But I'm, I, it will be just be interesting to see where the need will be because pediatricians are trying to keep those office waiting rooms right. reasonable. So one of the things that um, one of the directors this morning mentioned, which I thought was really interesting and I was gonna run it by Karen. And I, again, I think it was somewhere in Western Mass, but uh, they did like um, essentially family clinics, four to six or four to seven, where the family would come and you'd have to, you know, they were pediatric and adult vaccine, and then they just all got it together. Um, because again, this big push about getting, making sure the kids are vaccinated. And I thought that was an intriguing idea. We historically have not purchased um, pediatric vaccine, but that doesn't mean we can't. No, I mean, we certainly did it H1N1. Well, well and you have to train people to vaccinate, I think, a little differently when it comes to the pediatric vaccine. Well, in my experience over the past several years, one of the barriers for us offering it was we didn't have nurses that were comfortable doing pediatrics. Mm -hmm. My yeah. old school nurse leader in Melrose was a pediatric um, nurse practitioner. She was fine with it, but most nurses are not comfortable giving kids shots. 
We yeah. did a night roof with um, night flu clinics, and that was one of the biggest things was we mostly had families, but we only had one nurse who really was super, super good, and she would do the younger children. She was really, really good with them from like two up. She was the one that would give it to them. But having the whole family come in was really good, and it was a good time to capture the other problems, too, about something, and to do a lot of referring out to them for other needs that they needed. Oof. Well, I know Laurel's comfortable giving kids <laughs> You better yeah, be. Mine students, I'm very comfortable. No, not kids students, but you personally. Yes, I am. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know about Candace and Elaine. Are either of you comfortable doing pediatrics? I, I, I haven't done a two, like two, two to four, like recently, but anything that they can sit there, I, I'm used to, because I did all the immunizations for school age children, so. Yeah, I mean, be okay I work in we had a family people. clinic, so we, we do everybody. Yep. All right, so I'm hearing that we would have two people that would do peds, and so. I'm happy to talk to Karen about ordering some pediatric vaccine and, you know, the beginning of September, offering some family clinics. It would just, it would be interesting to, I wonder what the pediatric people even, what the practices even think, but yeah, I, I agree. I mean, I know there's a lot of footwork. I, I'm, I'm just not sure what's going on in the practices. Well, another thing too with pediatrics, even if they're not little, little kids, if it happens to be their first flu vaccine, they need two doses about a month apart. Right. So just for keeping track of all that stuff and how, uh, like, do we report it to uh, the state that's been vaccinated or do we give them like a paper they take to their PCP's office or? Well, what you're supposed to do is put it in the, what's it called? MIS. You're supposed to enter it into the MIIS system. Okay. That way everybody knows who's been vaccinated. Right, right. You um, know, one thing that we were pretty successful with at the health center was a, a mobile vaccine van for some of our families just to keep up with their routine vaccines. Um, I don't know if the health center is considering it for flu but we would sort of like make appointments with families and drive out and they would come down and meet us on the sidewalk. And we That's would- That's what they're doing, the, the new um, stop the spread thing. You know, there's different locations each day and some of them are the community health centers, but some of them are vans, same thing. Cool. Yeah, the patients really liked it. Um, it was it, like we were doing telephone well child visits and then we would send out two nurses or like a nurse and a medical mm -hmm. assistant to just do a set of vitals and actually administer the vaccinations. And then through that, you sort of had a, a well child visit. I mean, it worked now because it's warm out, but I mean, in December, that's probably not really going to be. Sorry. Um, <laughs> well, I think, I think families would like to do that because otherwise, mm -hmm. They have to bring their kids to their primary care for the kids to get vaccinated. And then they have to come to either our clinic or go to a pharmacy to get theirs. And if they can get it all at the same place. Oh, yeah. As long as they're not on whatever those two health insurances are that we can't use. I, I would right. think that would make it a lot easier. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Once I can talk Karen off the ledge of our COVID, <laughs> it's so, she might kill us. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to put her over the edge today. Um, <laughs> I, I will bring that up with her. <laughs> I'm sure she will because uh, I've done it. She knows that because we've talked a lot about it in MAPHN, and that's how we've always done our flu clinics like that. It's open to ages two and up, and the whole family comes in and they get to, used to it. I'll tell you, there's a lot of um. I actually noticed over after 20 years there, I actually noticed some who actually came to us from school and then were in college. <laughs> would come back from college to get them from us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It is so nice good. over time, get, you know, like yeah. going yeah. to the flu clinics every year, I see the same people. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, you're like, oh, hey, how you doing yeah, this year? Yeah. And I'm glad to see how well you're doing. Yeah, yeah no, I, I have begrudgingly 
accepted the the pharmacy taking that corner of the market because that's exactly what flu clinics did for us we were able to actually sort of see our community and it was true community nursing so i don't know i have a feeling we might be getting back to that because yeah. i think it's i think the flu clinics is a big opportunity for people to really learn more about public health and learning what we can and what the resources are that we have for them. That's one of the things I've seen. Yep. All right. Okay. All right. Great. Have we set our, are we on for the 19th of oh, August? That's the third Wednesday. We are the third oh. Wednesday, are we not? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm good for that. Ruth, are you okay for that? Yep, I'm here. <laughs> well, enjoy your time next week and thanks. And tell us later where you went, but don't tell us now. Uh, Lake Umbagog. Oh wow. Ooh, that sounds interesting. <laughs> I have a tent. I have a sleeping bag. <laughs> Do you want to paddle four miles to get to the campsite? That's oh, okay no. with me. I'll do it. You're busy, Elaine. You're busy. They're not going to let you go. Anything to get out, I'll do. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Chairperson Silva, do you want to close a meeting or you want me to? <laughs> uh, I think that we should have you close out your last meeting. Last meeting. Oh, okay. We don't want you to feel, you know, like we're kind of pushing you out the door. Well, or... you can make the motion and then I will close it. I will make the motion to adjourn the meeting. All in a second. Uh, I'll second that motion. Okay. All in favor, and this is a gavel for closing the meeting. <laughs> Great. It's awesome to see you all. You as yeah, well. Yeah, you enjoy your time off. Thank you. And that's a lovely color background for you, Ruth, by the way. Looks true. My dining room wall. Very pretty. pretty. I like the color. Thank you. All right. Enjoy. I hope the bugs behave. Wear Me lots too. of bug spray. All right. Night, everybody. Take good night. Rest. Thank you. Night, guys. Thank you all. Two days off. Enjoy. Bye bye.